Tesenov had a, a, a strange destiny in a way. He was the professor of, of Albert Speer, 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 who was the architect of uh, Adolf Hitler. But Heinrich Tesenov was against the Nazis. And actually, he was in, uh, in some conflict with, uh, with um, uh, you know, the political and the military regime then. And I'm, I, I asked myself, why was it that, in fact, Albert Speer was even his assistant in 19, uh, I don't know, 1927 or something like this, when Tesenov was a professor of architecture. So uh, he was, he died on November 1st, one day after Zaha Hadid was born. Zaha Hadid was born in 1950 on the 31st of October, and Heinrich Tesenov died on the 1st of November, 1950. So was a German architect, <clears throat> professor, and urban planner active in the Weimar era. Uh, yes. Um, no, I was looking at, at, at the year of his uh, birth. Uh, he was uh, 12, 12 years older than uh, Le Corbusier. Le Corbusier was born in 1880. No, two years younger, uh, older than Le Corbusier. Uh, Le Corbusier was born in 1878. If I'm always a little bit confused. Either he was born on 1887, Le Corbusier, or 1878. I, one of them, sorry for uh, uh, being um, uh, not sufficiently um, precise. Anyway, Tesenov is considered together with Hans Pelzig, Bruno Taut, Peter Behrens, Fritz Höger, Ernst May, Eric Mendelssohn, Walter Gropius, and Miss van der Rohe as one of the most important personalities of the architectural German panorama <clears throat> during the time of the Weimar Republic. Now, please note all these names, you know, to be considered together with that with them is not a little thing at all. I mean, here you have the, the, the glorious names of German architecture, Hans Pelzig, Bruno Taut, Peter Behrens, Fritz Höger, Ernst May, Erich Mendelssohn, Walter Gropius, and Miss van der Rohe. But, but his destiny was to be less known. <clears throat> and also, I have to say, I really struggled to, to, to gather some material about him very, very difficult. It is very, very difficult to find images with his work. And when I did find them, they are very low resolution, very small pictures. Uh, and I don't quite understand why, maybe because of his connection with Albert Speer. Uh, I, I, I don't know. I mean, he was a major force in architecture, but it's very, very little material about him. Uh, <clears throat> on the web. In fact, the Wikipedia in English doesn't even um, uh, say anything. There is no list of his works. I like the way he looks like. He looks like D.H. Lawrence, the, the, the famous British writer. Uh, he looks like an intense man, a serious man. I like him more than uh, most other architects. Even in his older age, I think he looks like a man who, who knew something about suffering but he also has some kind of a bitter humor or smile on his face. I like him. I like Tesenov. And his architecture influenced architects like Giorgio Grassi, of whom, uh, about whom I talked a few days earlier, the rationalist Giorgio Grassi. Um, he's considered, in a strange way, both belonging to the arts and crafts movement and to the rationalist movement. And uh, he, he had a particular sensibility. There is some anchoring in tradition, but there is also uh, the, the, the purity or the rigor of uh, neo-rationalist or rationalist uh, uh, work. We'll look at some drawings now. Again, I couldn't find a lot of images with his work, but I still, I still gathered around 80, 80 images. 
you see, his his drawings are very. Uh, I mean, there is an influence coming from Schinkel to him, but his drawings are very, in a way, very modern, but also nostalgic somehow. You know, um, look at the ceiling. You know, where he exposes, uh, you know, the wooden structure, but the walls are white. Uh, and the floor is, uh, you know, almost a contemporary uh, Cartesian uh, flooring. Of course, the human silhouette is not quite uh, belonging to our time. But otherwise, you know, if you make abstraction of the treatment of the ceiling and the treatment of the flooring, uh, you would say he's, a, you know, a, a modern uh, architect. Well, a little bit less here <clears throat> because of the wall coverings and the little curtains, you know, those fragments of curtains at the top and the chair and, the, you know, the, the furniture on the left. But I like his illustrations, you know, he, um, he showed, I think, a sensitivity that was not really dry. He also tried to evoke the, the, the atmosphere of a room also, here, he tried to evoke the atmosphere of a garden. And I like the way he drew the trees, you know, it shows sensitivity. They are not, these trees are, 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 are drawn uh, in a, you know, uh, descriptive uh, manner, but they are not, uh, you know, uh, overwhelming or cynically drawn or no, they, they, I think they show sensitivity and skill. And there is a balance between the facade of the building and, and, and the, you know, the, the impressionism of nature. And uh, even this drawing, you know, architecturally, you would say, come on, there's nothing exceptional here. Well, you know, this is like saying uh, life is uh, a sum of uh, boring moments or um, unexceptional moments. I, I actually see a certain poetry here, you know, a door, door is open and I see a chair there that maybe the one who is looking is moving towards and, uh, you know, there is a table and then there is a horizon and the sky and some trees in the, in the, in the distance. So I think it's a nice drawing and even this one is a little bit sweet, it's true. But it was done at a time when there was a, I mean, would you have imagined or would you imagine, for example, Zaha Hadid drawing something like this? We just talked yesterday about the fact that Zaha knew nothing about domesticity. Well, it seems Tesenov did know something about domesticity and appreciated it. And his drawings evoke this. Um, no, yes, there is a level of uh, naivete, if you want. Again, what, draw, what architect today would draw, you know, birds in the courtyard or in the space, you know, the garden around the building and so on. But this also shows a little bit of humor and uh, an appreciation for uh, things that do not belong only to the human, you know, and I actually think that we should appreciate again such representations. Uh, sorry, the resolution is not great, but I, I, I continue to like his drawings, his architectural drawings, because they are not just explicitly addressing architecture in itself in an almost narcissistic way. You can tell that beyond architecture here, there is life. An architecture is supposed to serve life and not life to, to serve architecture. And um, even these sketches, you know, these drawings, you know, they, they are a little bit sweet, but uh, you wonder, is this an architect or is he, a, what is he, a, an illustrator of, uh, you know, some seriousness and skill of domestic scenes? Yes, he was an architect, all right. Look at the, look, Look at what is on the table there, you know, a little doll and then, um, you know, uh, something that is expecting some fresh bread to arrive on and uh, maybe some scissors there. And then, I, I don't know, it's life. It's, it's, uh, 
uh, you know, uh, and it's this is a manually drawn uh, drawing. It's it's. I mean, just imagine for how long he worked just for the wall covering, but the wall covering has its importance, as as does the rug. And he even shows what is going, what is what is to be seen through the window. Um, so. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I, I am still amazed at the, at the hard work he put in, into into covering the walls with, and also the ceiling with this uh, wall covering. Anyway, uh, I also like the way he draws the trees, you know, because he 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 appreciates the beauty of the foliage of the tree, and he understands that there are two worlds: the world of the structure, symbolized by the trunk of the tree and the world of ornament symbolized by the foliage, which is impressionistically, um, you know, uh, displayed or re represented. And so is the, the green part, you know, let's say the, the you know, the ivy that uh, is uh, surrounding, uh, you know, the, the vertical elements at the entrance. Maybe here there is some influence coming from Schinkel or his own appreciation and love for, for uh, nature. I don't know, but it is uh, about, uh, about uh, an involvement with, um, with um, the complexity of life. Although he does it in his representations, his drawings are simple. Apparently he said, you know, because he was advocating simplicity, and he said, you know, not everything that is simple is good, but everything that is good is simple. And I think he, he, he achieved this in his own work. And I so regret, I, I, I have a little book on him that was actually reissued in India, and I have it here. But on the web, I found really, I found images of his drawings and, uh, you know, some more documentation about one building and, and some other documentation about another building, but he built much more than that. And I couldn't find information about all that work that he did. Anyway, um, we saw this one already. Um, now you see, he took time even to draw the, you know, the, 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 the you know, the, what the wood was all about, you know, is, 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 is in other words, he was very careful to illustrate, uh, but without uh, obsessiveness, you know, to, uh, things that have to do with, uh, with, uh, with the tactility, with the, uh, I, I see here a man who uh, uh, understood the domestic reality uh, quite well. And, and uh, although the drawings are rather simple, but there is here and there, uh, in some details, a concern for something that makes the drawing alive. And I particularly like when you see the plan is very simple, you know, it's, it's you would say it's a banal house. Yes, but the way he drew it, the plan and then a view, a perspective, the perspective also is drawn with in a very humane and, and, and warm way although the building is very Cartesian and, and very simple. There is something of a childlike uh, uh, approach to architecture that, that I actually like. And there is also an involvement with tradition, you know, uh, but there is also a level of modernity. The architects he was associated with were all very modern architects at least for that time, but not just for that time. You saw on that list, there was Gropius, there was Walter Gropius, uh, even Pelzig and uh, Mendelssohn and, uh, um, you know, Bruno Taut. This was a, a building that was built and you are going to see it. Uh, well, I'm a little bit confused because uh, it's, Maybe this is a building that was not built or I couldn't find pictures of, but he built a similar one, except that there are no steps there or no, no uh, ascending. Uh, I mean, you'll see the building it was a flat land, 
of the building that he built. It's possible that this one was uh, was either not built or uh, I don't know, maybe destroyed in the war as well. Let's not forget this architect built in, in Germany and Germany was ravished. Well, as a consequence of them starting the war. So, uh, you know, some of these buildings uh, disappeared. You know, imagine, imagine an architect today doing something like this would be totally dismissed, but this is actually not very different from Le Cabanon by Le Corbusier. So, uh, yeah, this is a contemporary drawing, actually, of a building by Tesenov. Stadtbad in Berlin uh, is, uh, is a, a pool, uh, a swimming pool in, uh, in, in Berlin that he did. And, uh, you know, is described, it is described as a rationalistic uh, architectural work. Uh, this is the exterior of the building. And uh, I think it's a very fine work. Uh, and uh, both outside and inside, I think, is, is very coherent and, uh, and, and convincing. Now, yes, there, are, there is uh, a certain amount of graffiti here because the graffitis are protesting usually against uh, rationalism. But this is a rationalist work that has some sensitivity, even inside. You know, yes, it's regular. But if you look at the, the, the windows and, the, and the, the glass parts of the ceiling, you see actually a, a, an interior that is uh, both monumental and uh, intimate somehow. If the windows would have been treated differently, uh, it would not have been the same effect. I think it's a very fine space, uh, uh, luminous, and um, you know, clear, uh, rational. It's a it's a sports, you know, space. It's a sport. It's a it's a space destined for sports. But I think it has the way he handled everything. It has a certain level of uh, intimacy, uh, rationalistic warmth. If I could uh, express myself in an oxymoronic way, here is a different story. But I still think what we see is architecture and maybe with a capital A, uh, you know, it's, it's abstract. It's, it's uh, this convergence of these four diagonals towards a one perspectival point is, is uh, I think it's impressive. And, uh, and uh, you know, it's an utilitarian building is not, but, but I think he did a lot for, uh, you know, it is a swimming pool here but um, it is architecture, no doubt. Now you see other pictures taken by a different photographer of the same uh, space. And you even see a swimmer or, uh, you know, someone who uh, is ready to plunge into the water through some spectacular uh, form of acrobatics. Now we see another work by him, which is a, a, a place for a building uh, for, um, you know, uh, representations, festivals, theatre from 1910, 1914, so mo a little more than 100 years ago, he built this building. This is an old, an old picture. It looks very contrived. It's, it looks very, you know, uh, rigid and dogmatic, but to me it also looks I mean, look at the symbol of Yin and Yang at the top. Now, I don't know if this is was done by him or it was his intention, but I, I, I have a feeling this building has a level of, of meta, metaphysics that are, is, uh, is not to be ignored. It is a metaphysical building. It's, it's, uh, it's, there is a level of, of surrealism. It is, it is a surrealistic building. Although it is very, you know, symmetrical, maybe because of that, actually, you know, the, such an uh, underlying symmetry, the way he conceived it, the way he made it, uh, is uh, is um, today it, it it would it would be uh, very difficult to 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 build in this way. Although Aldo Rossi tried a few times. Um, 
you also see the influence of tradition, but uh, um, not in an overwhelming way. You know, it is. This was an architect who was uh, formed uh, in the, at the end of the 19th century, and and uh, you know, this is a building done 10 years after the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, look what is uh, happening now, or it happened now um, uh, at some point. Actually, this uh, picture moved me, you know, because this was a building that was uh, was um, I think was part of uh, Eastern uh, Eastern Germany, uh, the, the, you know, the socialist uh, uh, half of Germany, you know, because it's uh, near Dresden, uh, but. Um, it's very sad, you know, to see this, um, you know, falling apart building by an architect who, who was important for the German culture and not just for the German culture. But I think it was refurbished. Let me see. Yeah, uh, the interior here seems to be fine. Um, and uh, I don't know what this gathering is. Uh, again, I, I had great difficulties to, 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 to find uh, pictures with his work. Another image from maybe be before the war, also please notice the absence of cars, you know, which is so, I think if the cars in today's world would just vanish, at least for a day, we would have a totally different world. In fact, we, we would have the chance to evaluate uh, our cities and our, uh, you know, settlements in a very different way. The cars really affected everything, and uh, you know, if you fill these spaces, empty spaces with cars, you will have a different perception of everything. Yeah, the building was uh, was uh, you know refurbished. Sorry for the the uh, you know the trademark or the logo of this. Um, company which produces uh, photographs but again I, I i couldn't find pictures easily with his work um i i am myself interested in tesenov although i'm not a rationalist but there is something i admire about this architecture you know the the level of honesty and also you know the the rigor and the uh, you know the uh, there is some poetry here, I would say. I, 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 this is what I feel. It was a different conception about architecture. You know, there, there was they, they, he didn't try to to make uh, you know uh, uh, acrobatic uh, you know spaces. You know, there is. But there is a level of acrobacy, but uh, but uh, discreet and and uh, and um, more metaphysical, I would say, not so obvious, hidden. It is in a way a meta architecture, to use the words of Wolf Briggs, who actually is himself looking for a meta architecture. He even said, if you only think of architecture, you only get architecture. So I think the best architecture in his conception would be an architecture that goes beyond itself. Yes, it's the building, uh, you know, uh, refurbished. Everything is, seems re refurbished here. The house is left and right and, and, and his building. But still no cars, which is, uh, you know, almost amazing. Now, there are other pictures of other buildings by him, which I couldn't identify. But this is still a building by Tesenov. Um, a drawing by him, which is, uh, you know, uh, bucolic. But uh, there is this side that in, in his work that is, um, in some kind of attention, almost a yin and yang, comp you know, a complementary work or dialectics with rationalism. Here you see clearly a modern architect, uh, but you also see the sloping roof, which is inevitably sending you to what we call uh, tradition. The same here, you know, the drawing is very simple, it's very clear, it's very clean, 
but then you have the, the, the impressionism of the ceramic tiles on the roofs, and then the two trees which create the stage design for this courtyard. Now this is a, a, a school, I couldn't, I'm not sure because I, either the buildings had been, uh, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the, there were interventions on it. I, I found all kinds of pictures that seem to contradict each other with the same, uh, with the same name. It's a school. I am sure he did this corner of the building. I don't know he did if he did the whole building, but what I see in the corner does seem indeed to be Tesenov. Um, you know, this is another view of, I don't know which part of the same building. Uh, you can see here the, the quiet rhetoric of the entrance, you know, of one entrance, you know, I, maybe I shouldn't use the word rhetoric, but, you know, uh, there is a, a certain level of willfulness, you know, of those three steps. It's, it's very functional, it's very rational, but there is a level of theater, a certain theater here you know, the, um, the very opposite of the Baroque. Um, I don't know, I, I think he was some kind of a magician of rationalism, you know, and look at this facade, you know, it's very banal, you know, what is it here? A wall, a, a, a door, uh, three steps, two columns, and, uh, you know, the insinuation of some roofing there, but still somehow, to me, it doesn't seem to be banal. And what is in the center is almost like a human face with the two eyes and the, and, and the mouth, let's say. Uh, anyway, uh, it's almost Zen, something Zen about it. Other images. Um, this is a, 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 a school in uh, near Dresden or part of Dresden, uh, Hellerau. Uh, this was, uh, you know, refurbished and I show some pictures, some older pictures. Um, I, I'm really sorry I couldn't find a more uh, coherent, uh, um, you know, uh, body of images about his work. But I still think, you know, um, I don't know if too many people today pay their homages to Tesenov. We do. And, you know, even if uh, this material is not uh, complete or uh, very well organized, this, we still learn, I learn something from uh, looking uh, for, for, for these works. And uh, I have a better idea about what his position in architecture was. Uh, it's very interesting that he received uh, Albert Speer, as I said, uh, in his class and then Albert became his assistant for a number of years, but Albert was rejected in the studio of Hans Pelzig. Uh, and then, as I said, he became the architect of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Adolf Hitler, unfortunately. And his son, the son of Albert Speer, ran a very successful architecture practice in Germany, which is still on a very big office. So the this is a drawing done now, but in the spirit of Tesenov, you know, this little cubicle uh, uh, house, you know, kind of a rationalistic gingerbread house, if I can call it so. Now, some houses also from the same, uh, um, the same area, Hellerau in Dresden or near Dresden. These are more uh, traditional, so to speak, in, in, in the way they look. Uh, it's, a, it's a collective housing, but a sum, I guess, a, a sum of, uh, you know, uh, I mean, private houses united by shared, um, shared walls in between. Different from what this drawing shows, because here we do see row houses, but they are individualized as opposed to here. Here is a collective uh, housing, uh, but it's probably a sum of individual houses. And this is a clock that he designed. It's actually for sale. If you like the Sen of you and you have a little bit of money, you could probably purchase it. I, I don't know its price. I, 
I didn't look either, I, but I know he, I, it was made public for a sale. And uh, this is his, uh, his uh, grave tomb, you know, this is uh, kind of strange. I, I, I don't know if he was, I mean, isn't it strange because this, you know, rather Cartesian architect, rationalist architect, uh, chose, if indeed he chose this, uh, you know, baroque stone actually, or rock for his grave, graveyard strange, you know, this, um, I, I, maybe it wasn't him, I don't know, but it is kind of strange. You didn't see in everything that I showed until now, uh, something similar in his architecture or drawings, and here it is. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm not very proud of, of, of what I did, my job uh, today, but uh, I tried.